Hey there, welcome to another episode of Strange Planet. And if you'd like to get into Strange Planet a little deeper, you can become a premium subscriber. Just click on the link in the episode notes, strangeplanet.supportingcast.fm, strangeplanet.supportingcast.fm. There are three monthly tiers or programs to choose from. Choose the one that's right for you, and uh, you gain access to commercial-free listening, bonus episodes every month, and a subscription to my monthly newsletter, Inner Sanctum, discounts on Strange Planet merchandise, and more, strangeplanet.supportingcast.fm. Uh, keep receiving emails, people saying, do another episode on uh, on 5G or do another episode on, on geoengineering and um, or, um, you know, the dangers of EMF. It's funny. It's very timely um, because I was just at a, a festival in Hamilton, Ontario. It was a Tesla Electric City Festival. Hamilton has embraced Nik Nikola Tesla because, one, they have a large Serbian community, Croatian community. In, uh, in Hamilton, so they've sort of adopted him, uh, Tesla. But the other thing is that Tesla um, medicine, his healing medicine, his technology uh, using Tesla coils um, is becoming increasingly mainstream, which is a good thing. In fact, Health Canada now has uh, approved a number of Tesla-like devices um, for, uh, for use. They can make claims like it can help with inflammation and, and blood clots and, and different things like that. So uh, but one of the things I learned at the festival is that, yes, EMF, um, electromagnetic frequencies can be harmful, but they can also be beneficial. So uh, we're going to talk about EMF right now and 5G and uh, welcoming back to the program. Someone uh, who's been with us a number of times. It's been a while. Matt Landman uh, is um, into grassroots activism, uh, whether it's film, interviews, international summits. He's gained recognition as a leader in 5G and geoengineering chemtrail awareness activism. He presents unprecedented and view-changing information uh, directly from official uh, documentation and accepted research. He created the social change documentary Franken Skies, bringing awareness to ongoing atmospheric aerosol injections, chemtrails, weather modifications programs, and uh, geoengineering. He's hosted a series of conferences, events, and protests concerning the questions surrounding chemtrails and relentlessly continues to speak out against the ongoing lies in our skies. Matt Landman, welcome back. How are you? Doing pretty well, given um, the state of the world. Thank you so much. How about yourself? I'm well, thank you. Yeah, holding on. Uh, as, as best I can. Um, Frankenskies Sky, Frank Skies 2 is in the works, I understand? Yes, I'm looking forward to cranking that out, but I tr I'm trusting the process. Just like in the first one, I wanted it to come out. And The first film, Franken Skies, which is available for free online, frankenskies.com. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's very important. The movie starts off in 1920s, and it's a historical chronological timeline of weather modification history, weather engineering. I wanted the movie to come out in like 2015, but all these things got in the way, you know how it goes. And when it finally did come out in 2017, I was able to plug the normalization and launch of the media campaign as um, saying geoengineering as the solution to global warming, which had never been a thing before. So that was important. And so because before um, around mid 2017 or early 2017, uh, and late 2016, um, there was no acknowledgement of um, spraying the skies with aluminum. And that was all conspiracy and chemtrails. And it was all um, crazy talk. But then when the government and the media come out and say, we're going to do this officially, it's called geoengineering, it's a fancy word, which we were using in our circle as well um, in conjunctions. You know, it's a, it's a synonym almost. I mean, not all spraying of chemicals in the skies and geoengineering so that's why we call it chemtrails anyways i'm being patient i wish the franken skies 2 was already out you know it's but there's so much happening and um, i'm going to be going to some protests in london protesting the 15 minute cities and even i live in southern oregon but even portland oregon and british columbia and there's a lot of places where these agendas are unraveling rapidly so I'm going to be bouncing around and filming these and, and try to get the movie out in a timely manner while these things are showing their ugly faces. So you mentioned 2017 and, and I remember, I think it was a, it was a conference in San Diego, if I'm not mistaken, where they announced 
their intention? Do I have that right? I remember some conference in San Diego when they they said, we think ge geoengineering is a good idea and we're thinking about doing it at some point in the future. And I thought at the time, as soon as they admit that they might do it sometime in the future, that means they've been doing it for decades. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works with disclosure. Once they're willing to admit an atrocity, uh, they're, they've pretty much fine-tuned and patented that and reverse engineered it and all that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, they they announced that they wanted to do it. And then in 2018, there was supposed to be this experiment in Tucson, Arizona with Bill Gates and his little henchman um, who's from Calgary, um, Bill um, David W. Keith, and he's the solar geoengineering um you know, front man. And they were to do this experiment spraying aluminum in the sky over Tucson. And we had a big conference and a protest and we put that whole experiment on hiatus. I mean, they're still doing it, but not as publicly as they wanted to be doing at this point. So that's a, you know, small victory for activism and humanity, but it's all happening right in our faces. They're turning this whole um, lockdown scenario that we got entrained in a few years ago into like, oh, now we're worried about and we've got you in that rhythm. Now we're going to turn it into this climate chains. That's why the movie is called Frank's guys Two climate chains, like shackles, mm. because they're, they're using it as a, so I guess I, I've learned recently about this um, think tank called iron mountain around the time of JFK. And they came together mm. and said, how can we evilly unite humanity? And it was like, okay, maybe alien invasion. Oh, maybe like climate catastrophe. And, and that's exactly what this is. There's the claim of global climate catastrophe is prompting um, people to believe that the government needs to step in and regulate us and regulate how far we can travel and all these things because of our carbon output. All the writing on the wall isn't being read and so many lies are being thrown out. There's truths. There's so many mistruths out there. For one, the number one greenhouse gas is not if we want to talk about greenhouse gases, the number the number one greenhouse gas is not even carbon dioxide. Also, Water. we ex we Water exhale. Vapor. Yeah, way yeah. to go. Yeah, we ex. Wait, well done. And yes, true, it is water vapor. And also, we exhale ca carbon dioxide all day long. No one's talking about planting trees and all this. And really, for anybody who's on the fence and doesn't really know, and people are like, "Well, I'm not a scientist," and look at these charts and la ti da. You have to just look at your skies. And once you keep looking every day and keep an open mind, watch my movie, hopefully, um, please. And it's not an ego thing. Franken Skies is just something everyone has to see. I didn't, it's not even a narrated documentary. It's actually, a, it's, a, it's a great movie. So look forward to the sequel. And if you can keep watching your skies and watch your weather forecast and witness yourself, a heat wave being created by geoengineering, aka chemtrails, aka solar radiation management, all these sort of things. They say they're dimming the sun to prevent the sun from heating the planet. But what you can witness with your own eyes is you'll see like, um, I don't know what kind of audience I'm talking to, but I'm going to do it in Fahrenheit just to keep my brain straight. Yeah. So you see, you see it's like 80 degrees in the summer, but in the next couple of days, it's going to go from 80 to like 110 or 100 degrees. And that would be the equivalent to around 20 degrees Celsius going to like 33 or something like that. I don't even know. Something like that. So you got this big push in um, the weather. And you watch your skies and nine times out of 10, they're going to create that heat wave. They're going to come and blanket the skies one evening with all these chemtrails and keep the heat from rising and dissipating in the atmosphere. They trap in heat and then the next day they trap in heat and they, they spray chemtrails and zap them with these microwave frequencies, which is intersecting radio waves, which is literally like putting aluminum in the microwave, literally. Because if you put aluminum in your microwave, you've got intersecting radio waves that are trying to make water oscillate, but you've got you've got aluminum there, so it just makes you know a hot explosion. They spray aluminum, um, nanoparticulate aerosolized aluminum in the atmosphere, and then even mix in other chemicals like barium, aluminum, strontium, cadmium, or, um, whatever they want, lithium, whatever they want to add to the con concoction that day, whatnot. But usually, it's to in this instance, it's usually aluminum, and then they'll add some barium. And then you'll see these ripples when they zap the sky. The ripples will even last an hour because they're superheating the atmosphere to near the temperature of the sun, you guys. They're superheating the atmosphere after laying out metals. So they're microwaving metals in our atmosphere and then trapping in that heat. And it'll take a few days and they'll 
create a heat wave before your own eyes. And once you can witness this firsthand, you don't have to listen to me or watch any movies or anything. Then all of that global warming stuff goes out the window and it's all bollocks, nonsense, BS, because if they're not let, telling us that they're doing that and then the next day you see on the front headline, climate change, you know, it's like, come on, people. It's like they made that. And then they're telling us the solution is geoengineering. And obviously that's not real. It's not realistic. This is well, all lies. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if people just thought about it for a moment, on the one hand, they're, they're pushing us towards this. I call it a giant suicide pill, right? This this mad rush to net zero is going to kill billions of people, denying them access to, you know, cheap energy and and so forth. But the the uh, the green uh technology like they want us to use solar panels okay so you need the sun to heat your you know for your solar panels to generate electricity but then at the same time they're saying they're going to dim the sun so which is it you want us to use solar panels or are you going to dim the sun they don't even have their own lies straight it's true and then the green agenda if you really look into it what green has become because green at one point i was talking to a friend about this recently green was at one point amazing where um activists camped out in giant redwoods and chased after boats that were killing whales and all sorts of stuff. Now the green movement has turned into what they call green watermelon, where it's green on the outside, but really on the inside, it's red, uh, socialist, communist, red, mm -hmm. because they, the, all this talk is of like rewilding and the green has turned into rewilding and it doesn't take into consideration humans. You know, we've got these reservoir systems where I live that the Army Corps of Engineers came and put in in the 60s and all the local farm and agriculture relies on all this. And now because the Biden administration says we have to, we're losing these five massive, massive reservoirs in the next few years. They're just completely dismantling them to rewild these regions. All at the same time, we've got these new fire zone maps that have come out. And I'm in a red region where if you're in a red region, you're not allowed to have trees that are um, within six feet of one another. <laughs> so your trees have to be six feet apart. Your neighbor's trees have to be six feet apart. If your neighbor's land is government land and they're not abiding by it, you still get in trouble. You know, So there's all these things where people aren't, it's all agenda 2030, which it looks like where you can't be in certain parts of the country because really they just want to push, push you into these cities to control and whatnot. And then if you look at these 15 minute sit, the, the, there's this thing called 15 minute cities. Mm -hmm. They're calling it low traffic neighborhoods, LTNs, smart or cities, smart cities, or um, extremely low traffic volume zones. And they've got all these little walkable acronyms. Walkable cities, yeah, the walkable city yeah. sounds there's friendly. <laughs> yeah, it does. It sounds sweet, doesn't it? Um, and cuddly. So each region, well, so it's it's fascinating. So in Kelowna, BC, for instance, Trudeau, the, the you know, boogeyman, the prime minister, president, dude of Canada. He shows up. I'm talking to a light, large audience. I'm just telling everyone who these people are. So he shows up and he's like, yeah, we're going to do smart city stuff here. And nobody even likes him there. And they were like, no, we don't want that. We don't need all these cameras. We don't need this. We're actually out in the, in the mountains. And he leaves and they got hit with all these wildfires, quote unquote, wildfires, which are very questionable because it's arson. These mm -hmm. fires are arson. There's arson, arson, arson. And even if you don't believe in it, engineered winds to assist this, these fires lit on the ground, the fires are being lit on the ground and it's being called climate change globally in the world news and all this stuff. And then people are saying, well, we've got to do something about this climate change. What are we going to do? Textbook problem reaction solution. Mm -hmm. So here in Canada, there's these regions where the fire cleanup will come and they're going to put in these 15 minute cities. In different parts of the world, whether it be New South Wales or London or even cities in the United States, they're setting it up. I mean, it's so many different things at once. The dystopia in the movies, it's just it's literally just bit by bit happening everywhere. So in Portland, which is my closest city, there's it's they want to be one of the smart 15 minute city people. And so they're putting in all these incentives and stuff. I mean, you don't get incentivized to grow organic or, you know, to do something good for the environment or anything, but you get incentivized to put in um, facial recognition in your facilities. So there's like convenience stores and whatnot already in Portland. And I was shocked that these things were in London where you can't get in without swiping your QR codes and whatnot. But in Portland, there's these doors you can't go in until your facial recognition is totally scanned. They know exactly who you are. And then the door turns green and it opens up and everything is um, there's no cash. It's all digital. So the biometrics are just getting to the point where everyone's going to be 
tracked everywhere and monitored and it's it's basically china but in slow motion so in china everyone's got a score this social credit score and if you say in front of the camera oh i forgot to take my birth control you're dinged points like in the movie demolition man i mean it's like dystopian so here we can't push it that hard so it's it's slower but already in london they're creating these like well we have to be cautious because you know it's getting hot summers and all this and climate change and so if your neighbor takes too long of a shower you can rat them out and get these little bonus points towards like getting less you pay less for your bills or whatever it's a setup for this social credit system where they need everyone ratting each other out to really set it up so what the 15 minute cities are is you can't go anywhere if it takes more than 15 minutes 15 minutes so they're putting these zones in place where it's like okay well we'll just charge you a lot of money if you want to go out through your zone but then that once that infrastructure is put in place every so every like few kilometers or whatever they say is 15 minutes then you have to pay and you have to pay and you have to pay and if you don't have the money you can't leave your zone and it becomes this thing of um, if you're rich you can travel if you're poor you can't go anywhere based all based on carbon all which is a lie and then when the system is put into place it's a slippery slope they can change it they can because they say oh well we're going to give you 99 tokens at first you can leave your zone 99 times a year but if climate change gets bad we're we're able to change that of course they're going to change of course it's going to go up in price and they're only going to give you one token per year and all this stuff is going to you know because the ultimate goal seemingly because everyone asks why is control (laughs) they want they need to control us because we have um they, we have what they want. It seems. Well, yeah, there's 8 billion of us and there's a handful of them. And mm-hmm. it seems like they want to take us back to kind of the feudal age uh, where, you know, if you caught, if you're caught trespassing and maybe hunting rabbits on the, uh, on the Lord's property, you know, it's not allowed, but they, these rewilded lands, they'll have access to them. I have no doubt about that. They'll be able to vacation and hunt and do whatever they want in the, uh, the rewilded corridors. But the rest of us, as you say, will be, uh, sitting in our stacked housing, um, it's it's soil and green for us and uh, paradise for them. What's wild is it's all up in the movies, and and I was a film major, and I never realized like I had missed a lot of these dystopian movies, but each one that I watch with this new lens, especially after the lockdowns of the last you know couple, couple years ago and all that, I watched a movie in time recently, and then I just mentioned Demolition Man, and then even. Um, I just watched Sixth Day as well with with clones, but especially the movie Blade Runner, which I read the book as well, which I was really proud of myself for having done so because I'm not that much of a reader. Um, uh, something Dream of Electric Sheep, but the writing is on the wall with these dystopian books and movies and films because yeah, the rewilded lands. They're the propaganda says that they're like scary and they're it's all for your own safety, right? But actually, it's it's beautiful. And that is where the elite will be living. And um, they'll have these beautiful bunkers underground and they'll have stuff above ground and they'll, they want this beautiful land. And it's, it's all seemingly strategic and it's all through fear. And, and it's, you know, the 5g will only be, you know, there'll be places where connectivity exists and connectivity does not exist. And yeah, I think that there's going to have to be some sort of larger, weird, psyop, false flag to really push people's fear into thinking that they cannot be self-sufficient, they cannot be rural, and they have to be in the cities to be able to get the, you know, update chip in their brain every month or whatever. Well, but let me hold you on right there, Matt, because maybe please. that's what uh, October fourth is all about. We'll um, we'll take a quick time out. Matt Landman is with us, Frank and Skies, and uh, soon Frank and Skies too. Back with more of the uh, program, Strange Planet, with Matt Landman. Stay with us. Hi there. If you want to watch the rest of these episodes, please head over to my Rumble channel, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. You can watch complete episodes there. New, complete, unedited episodes drop every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Again, the Rumble channel is Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. In the meantime, I want to thank you for supporting this YouTube channel all of these years. However, the problem is... I never know when I'm going to run afoul of the censors at YouTube. I never know when I'm going to end up in YouTube jail. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. And in fact, two more strikes and this YouTube channel will be taken down altogether. So help me fight big tech censorship. Enjoy the complete unedited episodes and join the rest of the Strange Planet community 
over on Rumble. Again, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet on Rumble.com. See you over there. Matt Landman is here, activist, filmmaker, grassroots activist. And um, we were talking about um, an event, uh, some sort of a false flag that is going to uh, scare the rest of the holdouts who are maybe homesteaders or get them into these uh, smart cities. A lot of uh, chatter about um, this FEMA event on October 4th. What do you think? Is that is that the uh, the thing that's going to happen? I wouldn't think that they would tell us, but there seems to be a lot of concern. I make these blackout foam bags that'll keep the FEMA thing out. So if anybody's interested in that, and I'm shipping them out within 24, 48 hours, uh, check out my EMF protection silver clothing line. I make the blackout foam bags and 40 other items at S-P-E-R-O, Spiro Gear. Dot com S-P-E-R-O is a Latin word for hope because the goal is to bring hope to the next generation. So you put your phone in the bag and you won't get the FEMA signal or any messages or anything like that. So on October 4th, FEMA is sending out this broadcast and it's from their towers. And I guess the smart TVs and, and this phones are all going to go, wham, 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 wham. this is just a test. Some people don't want that this signal at all. People are worried that the signal, because nobody trusts the government anymore, man. <laughs> You know, like even before, well, let's just think about this before 9-11, maybe people trusted the government a little bit, you know, some people, you know, but a lot, there's healthy skepticism in this and that, but like, you know, people maybe thought JFK, this and like, maybe, but like nothing after, like once people started waking up to 9-11 and all of our rights started getting compromised and the writing started to really get on the wall, elephant in the room and all that. And now COVID and all that happened, people don't trust the government. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Right. Everything seems to be a distraction. There's like a China balloon going over the country the same day that it, where they're covering up some Biden. You know, I think that some crooks were supposed to be going to jail that day. You know, it's all distraction. This one coming up seems to be, well, it's all fear-based, right? So they want to freak everyone out. It, it seems to be a test, but could it have some underlying frequency in it or something i don't know i don't think so i don't think it's going to be like that i think that they disclose things to us like this is maybe a disclosure mechanism but i mean i i don't know that's the thing i'm always guessing so will my phone be in a phone bag that day heck yeah i mean i don't even hardly use what i have so it's like but at the end of the day we have to own our own frequencies and not be put in spun into fear because that's for the people that are driving around wearing two masks still you know what i mean we're supposed to be the ones honoring the light and we have to grasp this everyone please listen the reason why all these different psyops propaganda things and disclosures mechanisms through the dystopian films and all these mechanisms through which we are attacked fluoride the air all these environmental factors you name it Every single thing, even like messing with the fabric of our clothes and putting in like plastics in these. I mean, everything, everything seems to be a battle. Okay. Why is all this going on? Because the powers that be are terrified of our true potential. Literally. These are like, it's, it's like some sort of bigger battle of light and dark, like this minor, tiny, small percentage wants to dictate our um, evolution and our potential and um, put a boot on top of our sovereignty because we're sovereign freaking beings. And if we realize how powerful we are and honored our destiny, you know, then we're unstoppable. I think that getting us um, resonating with all these falsehoods and all these lies and getting people believing all these lies and worshiping all these celebrities and all this witchcraft, it dismantles our true like potential of being like clairvoyant spiritual beings or something like that, you know, co-creator manifestors whatever and rising the vibration it's all like something witchcraft so there's a lot of fear spun out on the october 4th thing so i try to check that but having a phone bag is like empowering right so i think 
if we can flip everything into an empowering solution based thing, then we're doing something right. Like for chemtrails, it's like, yeah, I see the chemtrails, but talk to your friends, families, and peers at their level, you know, introduce to them the truth with integrity, honor the truth with integrity, and then honor yourself with like mineralizing your body with bioavailable minerals. I take sea moss, which is this um, seaweed that's mineral dense. And then when you're eating the minerals, then your body's not mineral deficient in absorbing the chemtrails like everyone else that's super mineral deficient because they're unhealthy, you know, and you start to learn these ways to be empowered and uplifted. And then you're honoring truth the right way and not being spun out like the conspiracy theorists that they want you to be. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, SpiroProtectionClothing.com. Uh, so that's protecting you from the the bad EMF because mm-hmm. um, we're, we're walking through this electronic smog. Um, but there's the good EMF, you know, there's the, the, um, what is the, what do they call it? The Schumann resonance. What is that? Um, about 10, 9.4 or something megahertz. Or what is 7.8 hertz. 7.8 hertz. Yeah. So hertz is how many waves goes by per second. Heinrich Hertz, um, died in his early thirties. He got exposed to a lot of the bad EMF, but he studied the frequencies and learned about it. And yeah, there's good and bad frequencies as we've learned. Right. Right. So, um, the other thing I learned at that Tesla festival, uh, that I was at was the, um, all our biological systems and our brain, um, operates at that's 7.8 Hertz. Yeah. Which is amazing why we all need to learn about grounding. This is very real. Everybody listening to this has a body and a brain and a heart, right? So grounding is very important because we're beings of resonance and frequency. Okay. You don't believe me. Don't sleep for a week. You have a life of rhythm. You wake up, you sleep, your, your heart beats. Okay. And down to your cells, everything has a frequency and a biorhythm. Okay. And it gets thrown off by number one, wearing rubber shoes and not being grounded with all this electricity that's hitting us from the power lines, the ungrounded outlets or whatever it may be, smart meters, very suspect on the smart meters. We could talk about that ideally, especially considering the Maui situation, what happened there. But the dirty energy that we're subject to through Wi-Fi and all that stuff, we sh- we need to learn about grounding, what it is, and and then what and then calibrating with grounding, which is like putting your feet in the earth and getting calibrated to the frequency of the earth, which is seven point eight hertz. So the Schumann's resonance, which I guess fluctuates, but it's around there, you know, consistently. So you go stick your feet in the ocean, a river some sand, something conductive, connect with a tree or whatever. And then they demonize it like, oh, those tree huggers. No, that's a good thing. You know, all these things that I grew up outside of Washington, D.C. I made fun of everything, horoscopes, astrology, crystals, all that stuff. And all these things now I'm like, hmm, quartz has a resonance and that's all interesting stuff. It's, I'm looking at it through a totally different lens nowadays, especially health things mm. because – you know, I mean, there's so many things like the word cure. We could go on down this rabbit hole for a long time, but I'll just say the word cure, it never meant what we think it means. It means to preserve something like you cure meat. Right. And that's what it's always meant throughout history. And that's where the intention is. And that's where the words have given it power and all this sort of things. And that's what it means to preserve something. So when you say you're going to cure your cancer, cure your cold, cure whatever, you don't even know the words you're speaking or the witchcraft that's going down right now. You know, so it's all really interesting to know the perspective of all of it so so yeah the schumann's resonance is the frequency at which we optimally optimally um operate at i mean you can drive your car around and it can have a missing freaking this and that but it's going to break down eventually you got a blown head gasket yeah you might be able to go down the street but you go on the freeway your whole engine you know you're gonna overheat like you get your engine all fine-tuned and then it's a, a working thing that works longer just like your body if your frequencies are off um your biorhythms are off and this is very very important because blue light can throw it off because your body thinks blue light is sunlight and your biorhythms get dictated by the sun and your and being in that schumann's resonance so if you can connect to the earth and get your your biorhythms and all those frequencies and all that intact then at the right times of the day, in the nighttime, and in the mornings, in the afternoons, and all these different intervals of the day, your body's creating the right chemicals. So at certain times of the day, your body's creating dopamine, dopamine precursors, melatonin, serotonin, happy chemicals that we need, and things that keep us going. And then if our body's 
clock is thrown off by frequencies that confuse it or um, lights that confuse it, like blue light and, and um, complex fluorescence. And there's no wonder the Biden administration is banning um, incandescent light bulbs, which is the good ones. You know, they're being banned. Oh, yeah, because of global warming and climate change. The the other light bulbs, like the um, uh, light emitting diodes, LEDs, stands mm -hmm. for light emitting diodes. Those are emitting blue light. And the reason why they're supposedly energy efficient is because they flicker on and off 150 times per second. They put us in a trance. And that flickering on and off 150 times per second, it takes a lot of energy. So they are hardly energy efficient. The only reason why they claim to be energy efficient is because they're off 150 times per second. Okay, but imagine what that does to our body rhythms that are used to not being blasted with that, basically, long story short. So you get your biorhythms intact and you can, you know, not um, get sick over time and own your, own your resonance, own your frequency, own your health, you know, and that word um, healthy self is heal thyself. If you break it down, it's up to us, not somebody in a white suit. Matt, another time out back with more in a moment. Stay with us. Hi there. If you want to watch the rest of these episodes, please head over to my Rumble channel, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. You can watch complete episodes there. New, complete, unedited episodes drop every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Again, the Rumble channel is Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. In the meantime, I want to thank you for supporting this YouTube channel all of these years. However, the problem is I never know when I'm going to run afoul of the censors at YouTube. I never know when I'm going to end up in YouTube jail. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. And in fact, two more strikes and this YouTube channel will be taken down altogether. So help me fight big tech censorship. Enjoy the complete unedited episodes and join the rest of the Strange Planet community over on Rumble. Again, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet on Rumble.com. See you over there. Filmmaker, activist Matt Landman, Franken Skies, and soon to be Franken Skies 2, Frankenskies.com and SparrowProtectionClothing.com. You mentioned smart meters. What's the connection between smart meters and that horrible fire uh, in Maui? Well, for the Maui situation, it's best that I just explain it because when something like this happens, there's all this convolution or um, confusion with all these different stories that come out by design. So it's been learned by the powers that be that when they do something naughty, they can just throw all these different things and make them go about viral because they control these um, platforms. They control TikTok. They control these things. So things that we think might be true, they're controlling these narratives. They control the narrative. They control the counter narrative. So it's very. Oh, you went on something to know. Yeah, it's something to know. I was clearing my throat. Oh, sorry. so no, it's great. So in Maui, what I see, um, and it's like, oh, what's the truth? What's your truth? Speak your truth. No, this, when I go and say things, I don't see it as my truth. I see it as the truth because of, these are things that I've researched, meditated on, and I'm not just like talking out of my, you know, but mm -hmm. so let's just go there. So what happened in Maui was a hurricane that wasn't a hurricane came from a direction that the hurricanes usually don't come from they usually would come through and hit the the big island so this is very abnormal for people that know the weather patterns there and then if it had come from that direction it would have gotten broken up by the trade winds so so this is abnormal already very very irreg irregular so then when the and mind you this is a volcano that has lava so the firemen should know how to deal with fires just saying the winds came and they were coming um, in a certain direction, um, not from the ocean, which is, you know, traditionally when you're at the beach, you feel the, what, the wind coming from the ocean, but whatever, I guess there's a hurricane coming from that direction, they say. So then these winds were very strong and the 
palm trees like bowing down to the ground. They're so strong in one direction. And at that time, opportune, perfect fires were lit. Multiple fires, um, likely just by arsons on the ground. But is there technology to precipitate lightning and hit it anywhere? Yes. Is there technology to strike lasers with drones? Surely. Um, but likely it was just arsons on the ground with fire lighting things because why not? You can pay some people to do that. And then earlier that year, there was talk of making the re the island a smart city um, and to show the world how they could be smart cityed out and make 15 minute cities and be the poster child for all that. And there was all this like land grab stuff, like the locals weren't budging. And so they had to put in this law that you can't rebuild on Maui land unless it's a um, natural disaster. So there's all these things that add up. And once you, if you ever take statistics, things get to a point where it's causal and no longer corollary, like mathematically, mm -hmm. <laughs> like you get to a point where it's not just talk or conspiracy, like, like something actually nefarious had to have gone down in this instance, if you add up all the information. So then with these fires lit, no warning sirens on a volcano, the electricity was not shut off. It was left on and the water was shut off, which is what happened in, in Talon, Oregon, where I live, when we lost 2,300 low-income homes in one day of just fire, fire, fire. And I think with smart meters, just the same. We had electricity on, water off, and high winds. Geoengineered wind, winds. You know, they're engineered. They engineer the winds. And this is all like textbook at this point because it's been happening a lot. Um, lit in BC, um, Paradise, California, Santa Rosa, California. Um, it's happening in a handful of spots. So and it seems to be like um, an attack on consciousness because a lot of these places that are being um, devastated are like high vibration, like places where like good people live. And now it's they're being devastated and turned into smart cities, you know, and they just flatten it out and roll in the text. So who's going to question it? So fires were lit from multiple angles and the winds took the fires to Lahaina, this historic beautiful town that i've visited before is like the best real estate in the world really sea turtles like right there on the you know it's gorgeous and then i believe that this tech is like weaponized neighborhoods at this point because they've got this smart meters on every home some neighborhoods you can get your smart meter off and if you're listening do it um if you can but these smart meters they're already interacting with one another through microwaves microwave signals and those microwave signals are directed to a local cell tower and imagine if you just sprayed aluminum in this in the air like you always do and then you juice these microwaves um, you could create a really hot fire that would look like what these fires look like which is melting cars and leaving trees and not necessarily messing with the plastic like it would like these microwave safe things are just sitting there and it's the same in these other places like Santa Rosa and whatnot that went through the situation. So similarly. like they're triangulating, like they take, they can, they can be very specific because they can activate certain smart meters in relation oh, yeah. to cell tower. That's great that you mentioned that. So when the fires come to the neighborhoods, they're juicing these smart meters because they are built to not have a surge protection from the main line. So they can, so in their defense, they could just say, oh, these are electrical fires from surges in the power. We should have shut off the power. We didn't know. And these homes are getting fried inside out because the smart meters are surging and, and like literally like frying the system, allowing the surges of electricity because of down power lines or something like that. But what's fascinating is I've been an activist for now like about a decade and I've got 70,000 followers on Facebook. People send me a lot of stuff on social media, especially Facebook. And I've had two situations where these ex-military guys have sent me um, videos of smart meters, their smart meter in particular in their neighborhood um, with infrared goggles and each smart meter has an infrared designation flicker so this is war zone technology where either a friendly or the enemy has a flicker of like a specific fingerprint of an infrared like signal so like flick flick bop, 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 and then you know to hit that with like a laser or a missile or to not hit it with your missile because that's on the helmet of John, the guy who's in the military, you know, in Afghanistan or whatever. So it's like, this is military tech on our smart meters and these things are surging and pulverizing homes, turning them to dust, like literally. And so what happened in this situation is people were evacuating and the fires came on so fast, so hot that they were disintegrating in their home and their, 
cars. Like they would have gotten out of the cars and jumped in the water, but they didn't have time because this fire was heating metal so hot and fast. And then the, the powers that be who used their little weapon a little too hard, a little too fast, they didn't want the world to know that over 100 people died. So the headlines first said 30, and then it slowly leaked out that it was the worst wildfire in the history of in the history in history because wildfires don't do that they don't creep up on towns and, and kill everyone like people evacuate and maybe one old person gets caught in their home you know what i mean like mm. this doesn't usually happen like this it was way too hot way too fast they were blocking I, roads yeah and i firmly believe that the homes that they wanted to stay stayed they gave them the right fingerprint or something like that with the flickering smart meter the ones that they wanted to annihilate they did and they completely cleared out you know, the region for what's going to likely be a, a smart meter. I mean, a smart city, a uh, 15 minute city course sort of thing. And once the dust settles, I do want to go over there and get some interviews for Frank and Sky's two climate chains. I just don't think it's the right time quite right now, um, but, but soon. Right. Still what a thousand people missing, probably most children, mostly children. That's what they're saying. I don't I don't know how to corroborate that. It's there's a lot of mixed stories and it seems like a total nightmare in a zoo over there. And the fact that they got handed hundreds of dollars and then Ukraine's getting billions, it it's just infuriating. It looks like that our country's a joke and everybody in the world is just like looking at it as like, what is wrong with your country? <laughs> so Well, yeah, that. I I have a th- kind of a theory, but I don't I don't know exactly how it works or to what end, but I, 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 if, I, it feels like they're trying to demoralize us uh, and like they rub our, our nose in their malfeasance and their corruption. And, and we have a, like the, you mentioned Trudeau uh, all during COVID, anyone who didn't take a jab was a Nazi and, and uh, anyone who stood with the trucker truckers was a Nazi. And then what do they do? Lo and behold, uh, on Friday, they actually um, welcome into the house of commons an actual Nazi. He was a member of the Waffen SS in Ukraine. Uh, he's 98 years old. Zelensky was in the House of Commons. So everyone else is a Nazi, but uh, they actually bring someone in who is a real <laughs> Nazi. And mm. people, they get this. They understand what's happening. It's like they're demo- they're trying to show us, like, look what I can do. There's nothing you can do. We're untouchable. We're, we're being demoralized. Well, that's how you make slaves is you – break them down and then divide the crap out of them. I think we're getting set up for some sort of weird civil unrest because everyone knows that the mail-in elections last year were totally bunk and fraud. And there's even been viral movies about it and all this. And I mean, I want to just see your opinion on this. You, did you hear that Biden like gave Afghanistan um, like a military, basically like we just left them all these yes. helicopters and all this stuff. Yep. So I met a veteran who had this patch I believe the number was 22. It was something like 22. And I asked him what it was. And he says, this is for the soldiers that actually got left behind. Biden supposedly left soldiers behind to die in that situation too. So all the veterans hate Biden, but it's like the, the media controls our flow of information. Like they're, they're giving us this information that like, wow, if that's true, like they didn't even blow up the hell. They just left. And now we all hate Biden. And now this next election and, I mean, if if I was a gambling man, I would say for sure there's going to be some BS where one of these states is going to have mail-in ballots and it's going to be a very red state that goes blue and there's going to be civil unrest. It's just like the writing's on the wall. So we'll see, but it seems like it's about to get very interesting. Yeah, they're trying to instigate and provoke uh, yeah. so that they can, what, clamp down further mm-hmm. and justify their surveillance state and martial law and whatever. Seems to be the case. <laughs> Leave us with some hope, Matt. Well, if we have the torch, we have the light of truth, then we're very special, actually. You know, you got to think about how many people that are out there walking around blind. I mean, literally, they're walking around blind. They have one of their senses taken away, their right to breathe. And then they'll even, when it all first started, it was witchcraft because those people were holding signs saying, I can't breathe. But it was about a different issue. It was about... Black Lives Matter, and they were literally subjected to witchcraft. We are the ones that have been able to break free of the witchcraft. So honor your light and see who you truly are, right? It's not, I mean, the light, being the light can be very terrifying and dismantling and depressing, you know, because we're in a weird, dark place. Let's be real. 
but we're here to shine and we're here on a mission and maybe we're not here to serve karma like everyone else, you know, maybe our destiny is completely different from a lot of these people. So honor your destiny and see that like, just because you're given the truth doesn't make you cursed, you know, on, on the flip side, actually, like we're here to be the light for the children and they're going to be the ones that, that bring it home. You know what I mean? Cause of the light in their eyes, I can see that they're going to be up against a lot, but they're also going to, you know, bring it home because that's the only destiny that we can have is a victory here. So even though like Elon Musk and transhumanism and all this nonsense, like we get to honor our spiritual humanity, not be subjected to that own our sovereignty. And I do feel that as the stars align and like the energy picks up, I think we're going to come into something that we can't even fathom. Like, um, our abilities to co-create or, or whatever. Like we are here to create our, a parallel reality or a perpendicular reality. Like they can make their smart cities and we'll be able to actually have our opportunities. Like it looks like a curse, but it's really a blessing because we'll finally get our opportunities to create utopia and people will be given choice and there may be a total split in frequency. And maybe, I mean, maybe there'll be a complete frequency shift where some people don't even exist on our, in our, con in our conscious field, but we are going to be fine. You know, it's people that don't have the truth in them is, is the ones that need to be worried. But it's like that Nietzsche quote where um, some people be dancing in the streets and everyone else won't even know what's going on. It's like whatever. I mean, I butchered it. But it's like when the alien invasion comes and people are losing their freaking minds and we're over here like literally playing checkers and not on that frequency vibration of complete fear and chaos, then we'll see why our path has been like this, you know, but until then just honor yourself and try to be healthy and take it one day at a time and know that you're here for a reason. <laughs> Thank you so much. Matt Landman, Frankenskies and uh, soon Frankenskies 2, frankenskies.com, frankenskies2.com and uh, spiroprotectionclothing.com. All the links are in the episode description. Matt, great seeing you again and speaking with you. Thank you so much. You as well. Thank you so much for having me. Hi there. If you want to watch the rest of these episodes, please head over to my Rumble channel, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. You can watch complete episodes there. New, complete, unedited episodes drop every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Again, the Rumble channel is Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. In the meantime, I want to thank you for supporting this YouTube channel all of these years. However, the problem is I never know when I'm going to run afoul of the censors at YouTube. I never know when I'm going to end up in YouTube jail. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. And in fact, two more strikes and this YouTube channel will be taken down altogether. So help me fight big tech censorship. Enjoy the complete unedited episodes and join the rest of the Strange Planet community over on Rumble. Again, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet on rumble.com. See you over there. Welcome once again to another episode of Strange Planet. Thank, thanks as always for sticking me in your ear. And if you'd like to get deeper into Strange Planet, you might want to consider becoming a premium subscriber. It's real easy to do. Just click on the link in the episode description, strangeplanet.supportingcast.fm, strangeplanet.supportingcast.fm. You gain access to commercial free listening bonus episodes, a subscription to my newsletter, Inner Sanctum, and uh, much more. Strangeplanet.supportingcast.fm. All right. Dreams. We're going to talk about dreams over the next 45 minutes. You know, um, I would say over the last six months, for some reason, and um, maybe we'll get into this with my guest, I've had the most incredibly lucid, um, vivid, I should say the word vivid, lucid has a, an entirely different meaning when it comes to dreams. I have incredibly vivid dreams. My dream life 
is richer than I can remember in, in decades, probably. Teresa Chung is an internationally best-selling spiritual author, public speaker, and is regarded as one of the world's leading dream decoders. She's listed by Watkins as one of the 100 most spiritual, influential living people. She works closely with scientists and neuroscientists researching consciousness and is the media go-to for expert opinions on dreams, intuition, afterlife, and the paranormal. After nearly three decades of publishing numerous popular books as well and truly earned the title, the British Grand Dame of Matters Psychic and Mystical. Teresa Chung, welcome to Strange Planet. How are you? I'm very good, and I love your introduction. It's the coolest one I've had. I really love it. And, um, you know, it is a strange planet because it's quite almost the middle of the night here for me in the UK. So perfect time to talk about dreams uh, and our nocturnal therapists that our dreams are. Nocturnal <laughs> therapist. I like that. A nocturnal therapist. Um, what is your definition of what is a dream? Oh, if only we knew, you may as well ask me, what is life? We can't really define it. And I love that. Dreams, as soon as you become to a definition, they uh, they uh, evade that. It's, it's beautifully elusive. The technical way of describing them are a series of images, sensations, sounds, and feelings that you experience behind your eyes when you are physically asleep. So that's the best way to describe it, but they are infinitely more than that. And from all the decades of research, I've been looking at dreams and what they are, why they have them, what they mean. The more that we research dreams, um, the more we learn about life itself. The two are so connected. I think when we solve the mystery of dreams, we might be very close to solving the mystery of consciousness itself. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So what, what purpose do dreams uh, serve? Exactly. We don't need them, do we? We go to sleep. We should shut off, but our brains don't. Our brains never sleep. They're busy working 24-7. But for what reason? We're asleep. Well, you could say from a logical perspective, scientists say, well, it's just the brain offloading like a computer and filing and storing, consolidating memories. Yes, that could well be the case. And that probably is one of the functions of dreams. They have many functions. But then why does the brain create these dazzling scenarios and stories, these brainstorming that goes on? And, you know, I'd love to share with you how many great inventions throughout the centuries have been triggered by an image in a dream or a symbol or a sound that someone heard that they went on to, to do things that have shifted humanity forward. What is going on? If it was just downloading and sorting and filing, how on earth do incredible stories come to us in the night like that? You know, I could talk, you know, from literature, for example, the plot of Frankenstein, which was the first science fiction novel, which set off all the others to come, came from a vision in a dream. Um, Einstein's speed of light theory of relativity. Einstein was a very vivid dreamer, and he's openly said that many of his creative connections came from a dream fragment. Fragment, and you know the famous quote: "Imagination is more important than knowledge." From Einstein, and then I could go on to innovations in um, in technology, in music, um, art. Salvador Dal, for example, um, he says that his dreams are. Photo his, his artwork is a photograph of a dream. I could go on and on and on, right up to Google, inventions like that, great movie franchises like The Terminator, the work of Stephen King. They come in the dream state. Someone wakes up with a dream message and has the foresight to reach for a pen and paper or a voice recorder, which is what I do, and write it down. And everyone listening, if you wake up in the middle of the night with a story playing in your mind, an image, write it down, please, or just record it into your phone because you will forget it if you go to sleep the next morning. And you don't know, it might be the next life-changing novel, inventions, <laughs> a game, games as well. Many uh, of the leading games came from a vision in a dream you can you can sense my passion <laughs> and i've gone off on a tangent here but you know dreams are no dream is trivial please write them down um i mentioned off the top that uh lately i have had the most vivid dreams 
um, over the period of, of about six months. And um, I'm just curious as to why do you think that is? Why that might that be? Is it related to diets? So I take a lot of supplements. Is there something <laughs> else going on? I mean, diet certainly plays a part in dream recall, not the actual dreams themselves, but your ability to recall them. Like, for example, B vitamins are very important for dream recall. There is a research study to show that when people were given vitamin B6 supplement six, vitamin B6 in particular, they were had more clearer dream recall. But the dream works going on it, with whatever you eat. So it's not necessarily that there's some shift in your life, maybe six months ago, some change in your waking mindset, because your dreaming mind reflects a change in your waking mindset or circumstances. So you need to go back and backtrack six months ago. Was there some massive shift where you're thinking of doing something new? Or, and I love this, are your dreams sensing something for you in the future? Because there is a really big movement in dream research at the moment suggesting that dreams all have precognitive elements that you are, are glimpsing a potential future it could be a situation or a mindset and your dreaming mind is doing what it does best which is prepare you for something it's taking you through all these scenarios some of them may be worst case scenarios to help you when you have this situation in waking life to cope because you've kind of been there before in the dream state because that's another blissful thing about dreams. When you're dreaming, your brain doesn't actually know the difference. So, you know, that, you know, that's why it, it, you can actually practice skills in the dream state. You can you can have conversations. You can do that speech you're nervous about or or pluck up the courage to do something in the dream state. And when you wake up, it's almost as if you have already done it. And that's a tremendous confidence boost. So I love the fact that your dreams have been particularly vivid. And I don't want it to be a phase. I want it to be something that's always with you, that you wake up every morning with massive dreams on your mind that you want to write down. It's, it's a burst of creativity that's happening to you. And it's wonderful. It's a sign also of a very active brain. Your brain is alert now. It's, I suggest, I, I would suspect that you want to push the boundaries even more than you are already doing so. Maybe you have done what you're doing quite a lot and feeling maybe that this is all becoming a bit repetitive and you want to make that next leap. And your dreaming mind is trying to help you brainstorm in the dream state what that next leap might be because in the dream state you can do that because the only thing missing in the dream state is reason and logic and when you're awake your reason and logic will override any creative instinct that might give you that leap forward it won't let you go there because it will say that's daft not been done before no that won't work reason and logic shut things down mm -hmm. but when you dream that's all gone and all you're left is with your internal creativity your intuition which is where all the magic happens please write down those dreams and see what dreams may come and where they take you and what you're going to find if you actually look back if you record your dreams for several weeks yes going on for several months if you look back that's best that's the step people miss with their dream works some people are very good at writing them down and then spending a day decoding the meaning the next day but what they forget to do is the third and in my humble opinion most vital step is to go back and see your dreams from several months before because then you actually see how your dreaming mind has been foreshadowing offering you brainstorming insights on your waking situations that may be troubling you and you can see how your dreaming mind is doing that because you need personal proof that your dreaming mind is your best friend and trying to help you in, in the only way it can, which is to speak through the language of symbols and metaphor. And sadly, modern hu humans have lost that ability to think beneath the surface. It's all very surface level, especially now as, as the world evolves with technology and social media. It's all surface, surface, surface level. Whereas in ancient times, we were much more in touch with our inner therapist, our inner world, because, you know, the, the, the idea of that, that something meant something else, like the sun coming up wasn't just the sun coming up. It was all about new beginnings, new, new life, new birth. People would work in harmony with the moon and all the symbolism associated with that. We used to be very in tune with symbols and metaphors, which really is the language of the artist and the poet. So really what your dreaming mind is trying to show you is that 
in your waking life, you may not be very creative. You may not think of yourself as an artist or a poet, but in the dream state, you are the world's greatest artist, artist and poet, and you are a pure visionary. You are able to sense past, present and future and have these amazing visions. But most of us just wake up, forget about our dreams and get on with the material, the waking life. You know, we're on this earth for a reason, we have to, but it's such a darn shame. Every dream not decoded is such a waste. It really is. And I want everybody to fall in love with their dreams because I have found when people start falling in love with the messages from their nocturnal inner world, what happens? It's a miracle. They start falling in love with themselves and realizing just how infinite and wonderful they really are. Is there a proper way or can you give us some tips on uh, a good way to journal your dreams? I would suggest um, doing it with the waking side on one side of the paper, your, just your waking events on one side, and then having your dream life on the other, because then you can see how the two are complementing each other and commenting. And also as time goes on, you forget what you've done in your day and, and, and whatever. That's one tip I suggest. Also write it down in the present tense all the time to keep it current. And another thing is, don't get hung up on interpreting one dream. Dreams work like a Netflix series that runs and runs and runs every single night. You've got to tune in to the next thrilling installment of you, because that's what you're dreaming. You're dreaming you, you're dreaming your inner world. And I work with scientists and neuroscientists researching consciousness, and I can tell you, Many of these scientists agree our inner world, our inner space is infinitely more interesting actually than outer space and the external world. It's within that the magic begins. But we, ha we have sadly lost touch with that connection with who we are from the inside out. And dreams every night are screaming for your attention, reminding you that you're more than your body, you're more than your mind. There's this inner space waiting for you to explore it. And if you just want some proof, just sit down quietly, close your eyes, and you'll see lights dancing on the back of your eyes like stars in a starry night, right? We go out there in outer space to try and find all these things, but it's the inner space. That's where we can really find out who we truly are. I can't remember who said, who said this. It might have been John Lennon, come to think of it. Um, he sort of posited, you know, what if our waking state is actually the dream and the dream state is real. Do you know, I find actually um, working with a lot of people towards the end of their life, you know, I've, I've, I've been a hospice, I used to be a hospice work, worker many years ago, that one theme I found with the older people get, the more they start to feel like their life is a dream and that we are the stuff of dreams. And they actually sometimes find it hard to distinguish between a dream and, and reality. And that again is a school of thought that it really this is all a mirage and that when you actually fall asleep in the dream state, you connect to your soul, who you truly are. And that's that's the reality. It's that wonderful quote, isn't it? Am I a butterfly dreaming I'm a human or a human? dreaming I'm a butterfly. Who knows? But isn't it wonderful that we don't know because it's the mystery, it's the asking of the questions where we find our meaning. People are always looking for answers and solutions. And they don't realize that when that happens, you shut down your growth. Because when you know something, you stop getting out of your comfort zone. You stop searching. And dreams are trying to tell you, no, I'm, some, I'm gonna throw you a dream that you're going to spend days, months, years even trying to unravel. I don't want you ever to truly know me because I want you to keep asking what if. What if are the two most powerful words in the world? If humans stop asking that, we stop progressing. And dreams always ask, make us ask, what, what did that mean? My goodness, what if I, I could learn to, if I could stand on that stage and, 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 and be the person I was in my dream? Or what if I, 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 could, I could fly? What if I, you know, all these possibilities? What if I could talk to animals? All these crazy scenarios that dreams give us, they encourage that curiosity um, that, that sadly, as we get older, a lot of us lose that curiosity because we leave our inner child behind that's why I love talking to children about dreams. I go into school, actually. I'm trying to ch um, champion dream decoding in schools 
<laughs> to help children get to know themselves better, to face their fears and anxieties, and in the dream state to rehearse things that they're frightened of. Um, because a child can sometimes feel very comfortable talking to an adult about a dream, where their fears and anxieties show up in monsters under the bed or or vampires or, or zombies, but not the actual issue that's worrying them. And if, if someone trained in dream work can actually see what's going on beneath all of that. Um, but I love talking to children about dreams because they're so in touch with them. They are, they don't, they don't, they don't, um, they don't beat themselves up when they have a dream or trivialize them or dismiss them. They may spend the morning when they wake up still in that dream when they're getting ready for school or whatever, enjoying the dream state. And we lose that as we get older. And it's it's such a shame. Is there, any, is there something fundamentally different be, um, of, from between a dream and a nightmare? I mean, aside from the content, you know, nightmares tend to be frightening and dreams can be weird or they can just, uh, you know, they can be happy. But is there anything different parts of the yeah, brain? Yeah, you're dreaming. No, no different. It's your dreaming mind just getting very frustrated because what's happened is night after night, they've been sending you messages and you've woken up and not bothered to think about them, brainstorm, look beneath the surface or reflect because your dreaming mind wants you to reflect on what you're doing, thinking and feeling in your waking life. And if you're not doing that, sometimes it will throw you a nightmare because it knows if you dream of being chased by a serial killer or awful apocalyptic scenarios or blood and guts, you are going to remember it. It's just your dreaming mind using those shocking images because it's fed up. <laughs> you haven't been paying attention and you need to because there's something in your inner world, your heart and soul, that you are not acknowledging in your waking life. You're repressing, denying it, or not even aware of it. And your dreaming mind is saying, for your personal growth, you need to look at what I'm trying to tell you now what these symbols are triggering in you. Because when you do, when you turn around and face whatever is chasing you in the nightmare, that is where the growth is. If you keep running as you are in waking life, you're not going to grow. And, and a nightmare is is a, just a, an extreme, even more extreme dream. But I, you know, it's a transformative gift, a nightmare. It offers you an opportunity to course correct because it's saying something in your waking life is heading in the wrong direction. Hmm. So it offers you, a, I, I'm always so grateful if I have a nightmare because it's warning me to stop, pause and reflect and course correct. Because otherwise the future I'm creating with my current thoughts, feelings and actions is not going to be one that's going to make me feel fulfilled. But my nightmare offers me an opportunity to stop, pause, reflect, change my thoughts, feelings and actions in a more in a direction that's more optimum for my personal growth. Teresa, we'll take a time out, come back and uh, discuss dreams some more. The Dream Dictionary from A to Z, the Element Encyclopedia of Birthdays, the Element Encyclopedia of Ghosts and Hauntings. We'll tell you how to get a copy as well, but uh, tonight we're focusing on dreams. Back with more of our conversation right after these. Hi there. If you want to watch the rest of these episodes, please head over to my Rumble channel, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. You can watch complete episodes there. New, complete, unedited episodes drop every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Again, the Rumble channel is Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. In the meantime, I want to thank you for supporting this YouTube channel all of these years. However, the problem is I never know when I'm going to run afoul of the censors at YouTube. I never know when I'm going to end up in YouTube jail. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. And in fact, two more strikes and this YouTube channel will be taken down altogether. So help me fight big tech censorship. Enjoy the complete unedited episodes and join the rest of the Strange Planet community over on Rumble. Again, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet on Rumble.com. See you over there.
And Teresa Chung is with us. We're talking about dreams. What's the latest, uh, would you say, the most exciting scientific um, research into dreams right now? Oh, um, I love the research that shows that brain, brain, a dream recall is actually very good for your uh, holistic well-being. There's some studies to suggest that. I love all the research into the waking brain, actually, suggesting that it's predictive. And, you know, what happens with the waking brain happens with the sleeping nocturnal brain as well, um, suggesting that our dreams are trying to offer us glimpses of a potential future. I find that really exciting. But also there's been a lot in the media recently about lucid dreaming and its ability to help ease uh, PTSD, stress, practice skills. There was a recent study published this year in 2023 where they will, um, the Institute of Noetic Sciences, I work with the scientists there, Dr. Garrett Yount and the lucid dreaming expert, Charlie Morley. They were working with veterans suffering from PTSD and they put them on a simple course of lucid dreaming. Uh, lucid dreaming, if you're listening, I'm sure you know, but it's when you're, you're dreaming and you know you're dreaming and you can actually dreamscape, influence the content of the dream. And but helping them rescript their dreams, actually there was an 85% recovery rate from stress with these veterans. It was it's it's remarkable showing that working on themselves from the inside in this unconscious way when they're asleep, when the body's asleep, is has remarkable healing benefits. So who knows what the future holds for dream research? And I love the fact that there is so much dream research now. It, it used to be deemed in my day when I when I was at Cambridge and I was um, I really wanted to, 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 to do my dissertation on dreams and all that. The, it was deemed very unscientific and unacademic. Um, that just wasn't it was a dream nonsense. But I, I think in the last 10 years, it's been a radical shift um, of interest in the dream state and its, its potential for not just for physical, emotional, psychological, mental health and well-being. And, and for a dream author, as I've been championing dreams all my life, it, forgive the pun, it is a dream come true. And there's more research ongoing at the moment, um, particularly in lucid dreaming. That is the area that's the most exciting um, way to dream, you know, um, you know, the movie Inception, when you know you're dreaming, when you're dreaming. Um, that's the most sort of, um, you know, dramatic and exciting. But I'm going to do a big shout out here for the non-lucid dream state because most of us find it very hard to achieve the lucid dream state there's tools and techniques to trigger it naturally you can but it requires great discipline and sometimes it disrupts your sleep schedule which i don't recommend because sleep we go to bed to meet dr sleep you know, the holistic healing benefits of that and um, if we're lucky we get a chance to recall our consultation with professor dream <laughs> um, and a lucid dream is just like the holy grail it is a, is a gift that sometimes sometimes can happen but I want to champion the non-lucid dreams as well because the great majority of us that's what we experience the most a lucid dream happens occasionally and I don't want people to think oh well I I didn't know I was dreaming so waste of waste of my energy working on it uh -uh, absolutely not every single dream is precious wisdom from your heart and soul please do not ignore it if I could tell you, it, it's what your heart, your intuition, your soul notices during the day that is vital for your well-being and personal growth, but which your ego, your conscious logic and reason is blocking. And the only way that you can be alerted to it is in the dream state. So please don't ignore it. <laughs> How can we improve our ability to recall? So often, and I, I know many people are relating to this the moment you wake up you have the most incredible dream the, the moment you you wake up it's 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 like i don't know cream dissolving in a coffee cup it's just so, it just dissipates and it's gone forever and no matter what you do you'll never remember it How i do you, know it's like it's on the tip of your tongue isn't it as well it's yeah. really annoying and you think oh, i've had that sometimes you know and i think oh that's a great dream i'll write it down in a minute i'm too tired and then it's gone and the reason it's gone is it's, it comes from the gentle, subtle world of the unconscious. And the more you wake up, the ego is very dominant. Logic and reason are very dominant. And they shut that down pretty quickly. So you really have to work 
fast uh, using a voice recorder or a pen and note paper, even if it's just writing down one symbol that you remember, because often when you write down one the next morning that will trigger off other, other memories. It really is sort of getting into the habit of when you wake up, just spending a minute, that's all you need, writing down some keywords, drawing it, or if you your handwriting's terrible, like mine is these days, I, I talk into a voice recorder, and then I get on with my morning, my busy day and my busy lives as we, as we all have, and then later in the day, I look at the dream again, I revisit it and try and see what was my intuition trying to tell me. But also going to sleep at night and telling yourself, you're going to remember your dreams and it's going to be fun. You know, take away the stress. Don't make it, you know, some dream um, courses and everything is all too serious and too intense. And, you know, you've got to enjoy it. It's, 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 it's great fun dream work. So don't put pressure on yourself. If you wake up and you haven't got recall, that's fine. You can dream another dream tomorrow. There's always another night's sleep for you. Um, to, to dream again um, and when you wake up in the morning keep still keep your eyes closed you want to keep in that dream state because the moment you even blink your mind redirects you become more awake uh, and conscious and as I said dreams can't break through and then during the day read some fiction that's a great way of activating the part of your brain that is creative and intuitive or watch some fantasy on television or game there's a lot of studies about uh, gamers and and their ability to lucid dream very frequently fascinating um there is a connection actually between gaming and very vivid dreaming as long as the gaming is in moderation you know like everything in life don't get addicted but gaming actually is a wonderful way to stimulate all areas of your brain because your logical part of your brain is working the controls and trying to have a game plan but the creative part of your brain is is immersed in this alternative reality and daydreaming and what you've got is two the both parts of your brain fully alive fully active and that doesn't often happen in our lives often one part of our brain is kind of like minimized uh, with the other part working but with gaming it, it like also if you're not into gaming listening to music has a similar effect that both parts of your brain if you listen to music, the um, you, the logical part of your brain, the rational, makes sense of the notes. The pattern tries to hear the song, but the intuitive dreaming part is just gone away somewhere. You know how, how music can elevate our souls and spirit. And what you've got, you've got the two parts of your brain, for once, not arguing with each other and trying to put each other down and dismissing each other. They're just walking side by side, agreeing to differ, but doing what they do best. And you've got your whole brain alive. So gaming, uh, listening to music, um, <laughs> those, those uh, artwork, all these kind of things that can get the whole brain alive. If you do that during the day, your brain is kind of primed and ready to, to, to feel comfortable in the dream state and you're more, much more likely to recall. Also listening to this interview, I hope people listening to this interview because during the day they're listening to someone, <laughs> this weird British lady talk about dreams and they're thinking, well, they're either thinking, well, this is a load of nonsense or they're thinking, well, maybe she's got a point. It doesn't matter. I don't mind what you think, but you're thinking about dreams. My job's done because I've drawn your attention in the waking day to the to dreaming and they might have meaning and where your attention goes is where the reward is and what will show up in the dream state. So keep thinking about the possibility of dreaming during the day and you're far more likely to recall dreams when you wake up in the morning. And I hope you have wonderful, wild, wonderful creative dreams when you wake up the morning after listening to this interview. <laughs> Teresa Chung stays with us. When we come back, we'll find out how dreams can influence our waking lives. Back with more right here on Strange Planet. Don't go away. Hi there. If you want to watch the rest of these episodes, please head over to my Rumble channel, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. You can watch complete episodes there. New, complete, unedited episodes drop every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Again, the Rumble channel is Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. In the meantime, I want to thank you for supporting this YouTube channel all of these years. However, the problem is I never know when I'm going to run afoul of the censors at YouTube. I never know when I'm going to end up in YouTube jail. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. And in fact, two more strikes and this YouTube channel will be taken down altogether. So help me fight big tech censorship. Enjoy the complete unedited episodes and join the rest of the Strange Planet community over on Rumble. Again, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. 
on rumble.com. See you over there. Teresa Chung is with us, the Dream Dictionary from A to Z. Um, dream interpretation. Uh, we often hear about Carl Jung and, and archetypes being used to interpret dreams. How do you work? I have studied every school of dream interpretation. And when I was given the honor, oh, it's like over 20 years ago now, more than that, in early 2000s, to write this massive, it was actually started as the Element Encyclopedia of 20,000 Dreams, a huge tome, which was the most common dream symbols listed A to Z. I found that the best way to interpret was to kind of mix all of these schools of dream interpretation to come up with some kind of psychological self-help with a hint of spirituality and mysticism in there. I think all schools of dream interpretation have a very, very valid point, but, I don't subscribe to one specific school. I don't think, again, you can't pin dreams down like that. You know, for example, at the Freudian school, every dream is about repressed sexuality. They have a point, but no, Jung extended that to it's about archetypes and the collective unconscious. And he had Adler, which is about power. I could go on and on and on, um, you know, wish fulfillment and all that. There's every school of dream interpretation has pushed dream work forward. And you can, I would suggest anyone who wants to study it to just learn what you can from that school of dream interpretation, but don't, it's not the only way. There's so many other ways. It's a bit like religion in a way. Many religions are beautiful. They are utterly beautiful, um, but that doesn't mean another religion isn't as well and hasn't got something valid to say. So treat it like that. You know, a lot of us are spiritual these days, not religious. So just, just take what you can <laughs> and that's that's been my my approach to sort of like all of them really together um and then to use a lot of my own gut instinct and 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 familiarity with with dream terms and dream work to create what i hope and it has stood the test of time because it's still in 2023 being reissued uh by barnes and noble right now it's never gone out of print i'm i'm super proud of it but if you do have a copy of my dream dictionary um what I give there is the common and universal symbols, the most likely one. For example, if you dream of a cross, it's chances are it's a symbol of religion. Or if you dream of a dog, it's a sign of unconditional love and loyalty. However, if you've had a bad experience with the dog, you know, my interpretation in the dictionary I give won't be correct because a dog will then be a symbol of fear and anxiety. So always... Go for your own personal association first. You've got to bring in the personal. If nothing triggered from your dream symbol, then go to my dream dictionary or go online. But be careful when you Google online because there's a lot of negative uh, negativity out there. Um, uh, and I'm very against that because I think your dreaming mind is your best friend and it's trying to raise you up. Sometimes it will use tough love and shock tactics, but it's trying to raise your vibration. If you read a dream interpretation anywhere or a friend or a well-meaning uh, person in your life gives you interpretation as, oh, it's negative. It is the incorrect interpretation. Your dreaming mind wants only your what is good for your evolution and growth. Sometimes that might make you feel a bit uncomfortable, particularly when you go into your shadow side and facing your fears and your anxieties, but that's where all the growth happens. So rule of thumb, if you have an energy shift when you've interpreted a dream, that's the correct interpretation. If it drains you and diminishes you and makes you feel less than, it is not the correct interpretation. Hmm. True or false, everyone in your dream is a different facet of you. I would say in the overwhelming majority of cases, absolutely. That's why, for example, cheating dreams when people think, oh, do I, you know, have I got a crush on this person? Not necessarily. This person represents an aspect of yourself 
that you need to integrate, you need to get up close and personal with. However, I think the exception is people that you spend every day of your life with, really, people you're extremely close to, people who are a constant in your life. When they appear, it tends to be more about them. And sometimes your dream may be offering um, you some insight into what's going on within them that you might not be aware of and you might want to sort of like have a conversation with them. I do actually encourage that now, actually, within reason, and you've got to have a very loving and trusting relationship with the person. But if you have dreamt of someone and they're doing something out of character or whatever, talk to them about it. Bring the dream alive. It can be very, very, it can be fascinating. And sometimes actually, again, you know, it can happen that you dream about someone that you haven't been in touch with for a long, long time. And if you get in touch with them, you may well find either they've been thinking of you or there's something very traumatic going on for them, some big life change. So again, trying to pin dreams down in the overwhelming majority of cases, yes, it's all about you. It's, it's, a, it's like going into a hall of mirrors but there are always exceptions in the cases of people you know very well. And then sometimes when a random person pops up and it's a very striking dream, take note of that. That person may need some conversation with you or some support, even if it's only a prayer, you know, an invisible prayer, if you don't feel comfortable, that person may need some loving energy sent to them. So how do we uh, incorporate the lessons we've learned in our dreams into our our waking life like anything you just brainstorm the meanings and just see well how is this trying to help me move forward um it's it's it, it's very difficult to say really um it, it's something that you kind of will naturally do you will you will sense that the dream has a scenario that you need to pay attention to and it's trying to pull pull you forward. It's it's quite difficult without specific examples to say that. You know, often I do call-ins. I do national call-ins a lot over here in the UK on on ITV, and then you can kind of see it in action. A person will share a dream, and then we will have a have a dialogue, and we will soon be able to get to the bottom of why that dream has stuck in this person's mind and how it can help them move forward. Often, it is asking you to look at your mindset because most of the time, you aren't actually dreaming about what's going on in your life. You're dreaming about your mindset, your perspective. And as we know with this huge manifesting trend at the moment, perspective and your belief, what you believe about your waking life is what you are going to attract. So your dreaming mind is showing you how your unconscious beliefs are attracting what you want or repelling it. It's again offering you an opportunity to work on that mindset so that it's a more, more conducive to attracting into your life what you want. And that's why dream work is one of the most neglected manifesting tools out there. A sign that you're very close to achieving maybe what you want in waking life is you actually start dreaming that it's happening because what is going on there if you dream like you have the job the relationship what all these things that you want you you're un at an unconscious level you believe it's possible and the great majority of us say we want things but deep down we don't believe it can happen so celebrate it if you have a dream where where things are working out you know, and, and, and what you want is coming true because that means you're so close to manifesting it. Your unconscious is on board. And when your unconscious is on board, believing it, in it and believing in you, that's when the miracles start to happen. Don't neglect the dream state. And it's, it's such a shame that the, the top 10 most common dreams are being chased, are, are falling, are dying, all these disaster scenarios suggesting that a lot of us are having a lot of inner conflict um, you know, that we're not um, expressing in our waking life. You know, I, there's this trend toward toxic positivity at the moment, you know, affirming, affirming and all that. That's no good if deep down the core beliefs aren't being uh, dealt with and dream work can help you deal with those 
core beliefs you have about yourself and your worthiness of happiness. For years, it doesn't happen uh, so much anymore, but for years I would have dreams where my teeth were falling out. Uh, like I was spitting out chiclets uh, or I'd reach into my mouth and, and all my teeth were broken and they were falling out and I would be spitting my teeth out. I know, and I've since learned that's a very common dream. What does it mean? It is, and it's interesting because obviously your line of work is all about communication because if you look in the animal world, teeth are about communication. So it's, this is something that was on your mind and it's thinking, am I, what am I, what are, it's you actually assessing yourself and saying, what am I saying? Is it correct? Is it what I want to say? Should I have said something different? It's just you basically doing what a lot of successful people do is basically being hard on yourself and over analyzing what you're doing. And in the dream state, your dreamy mind is trying to work out that stress for you. However, that's one interpretation that I would do for you personally because of your line of work. But in the great majority of cases, it's just simply a sign of transition and change and, and enjoying that change. Because if you think when babies lose their teeth, it means they're growing up. They're growing up to the next exciting phase of their life. And so what your dreamy mind is saying, you need to lose your teeth because you've got to leave, you've got to let go of something and you've got to move on with joy to the next phase. Because one of the biggest causes of unhappiness is people let go of a phase and can't let go of something that is, and that could be a mindset or a life situation or a relationship or anything, but they need to let go. Because until you let go of something, you haven't got the space within you to bring in the new. Letting go is frightening though because it's the familiar, mm. but it's supposedly the dream, dreamy mind saying, let go of, of that and open it yourself up to something new. And also letting letting go, one of the best ways to let go is forgiveness. And sometimes that forgiveness is not other people, it's ourselves. So it's a very, very rich dream, rich in metaphors and symbols. Again, dreamy mind encouraging you to brainstorm and reflect. But the positive interpretation, which I urge everyone who has this dream, is it's transition, it's change, and change is good. It means you're growing, you're going to the next stage. Don't fight it. Um, I often dream, I have so many relatives that have passed over, My both my parents gone, and my grandparents, of course, long gone, uh, aunts, uncles, all, all of them actually gone, some cousins now passing over. Uh, my my dreams are often populated by dead people. What does that mean? Oh, I'm so sorry for your for your loss. But what I firmly believe, because I write extensively about the paranormal as well, the possibility of an afterlife, angels, spirits, near death experiences. Literally, I am a serial author. I have written so much in this area. It is my passion um, to spread the word that spirit is real. And what I firmly believe that you, these are night visions and they are afterlife signs. And, you know, in ancient times, it was believed that the dream state was, you know, um, a doorway to the afterlife. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I've not had any afterlife contact. And then I say to them, have you dreamt of them? And they say, well, yeah. And I say, well, that's it. That's a subtle, gentle way. And I think spirit does that because it knows it's not going to cause you alarm. Um, but it is very healing. There is research, I think the University of Northampton here in the UK, which has shown that in over 90% of cases, people who dream about departed loved ones tend to deal better with their grief. It's a very healing and beautiful thing that happens. And you can actually have conversations with departed loved ones. I've had that when I've loved and lost people and met them again in a dream. And it's been, I've woken up. And I don't wake up depressed that they aren't there. I wake up exhilarated because that some part of me has been reassured that death ends a life and not a relationship. And that relationship has carried on. Um, and I I glimpsed it in the dream state. And it's 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 and when you experience it, you'll know it's it's a goosebump moment. It, it reminds you again, what I said earlier, that we are more than our bodies. We are more than our minds. We are dreaming beings having a human experience. <laughs> the Dream Dictionary from A to Z. How do we get a copy? I, I'm delighted at the moment Barnes & Noble has got a copy in all their bookstores. Um, of course, it will be on on Amazon as well and and the usual usual places there are various various reissues of it because occasionally um, HarperCollins will ask me to 
add in or edit a few, um, um, but you can go right back to the element encyclopedia of 20,000 dreams, which is how it all started. And it's gone through various reissues. Um, and the latest one is, is currently in Barnes and Noble. And uh, the latest is empower your inner psychic. Oh, that's another book. As I said, I'm a serial, I'm not a serial killer. I'm a serial author. Um, yes. And I have three more books coming out next year. I, I'm very blessed um, to have to be in this position. And you've got to remember, I started doing this in the, in the late 1990s when it wasn't so easy to talk about the paranormal. And my I was blessed to have these big publishing houses publishing me, but they wouldn't promote it because it was deemed sort of like a bit nutty, you know, woo woo. Um, but the books did very well. And ever since then, literally one or two books a year, I steadily and quietly go on and on. And, you know, it finds finds the reader. And, and again, next year, as I say, at this age and stage in my life to have three more titles coming out in this field, one on dreaming, uh, which will be more about how dreams can help your waking life. Um, one on our haunted world, you know, um, famous hauntings um, all over the world. And one on the cosmic forces that create our year and the, and each day of the year. So I, get, I, I feel truly blessed to be able to do that. And to speak to people like you, thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. My great pleasure, Teresa. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk again. Uh, so much to discuss, so many books to delve into. <laughs> a, a real delight. Thank you. Thank you. Richard Serrett's A Strange Planet drops every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Hi there. If you want to watch the rest of these episodes, please head over to my Rumble channel, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. You can watch complete episodes there. New, complete, unedited episodes drop every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Again, the Rumble channel is Richard Serrett's Strange Planet. In the meantime, I want to thank you for supporting this YouTube channel all of these years. However, the problem is I never know when I'm going to run afoul of the censors at YouTube. I never know when I'm going to end up in YouTube jail. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. And in fact, two more strikes and this YouTube channel will be taken down altogether. So help me fight big tech censorship. Enjoy the complete unedited episodes and join the rest of the Strange Planet community over on Rumble. Again, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet on Rumble.com. See you over there.